Don? Don Strachey? It must be Paul Hale. Yeah. Gotta tell you, Paul, I usually meet new clients in my office. Um, I'm sorry, I just can't really be seen going there. Um, uh, not now. Look, I don't know why we couldn't have just done this over the phone. I like to meet clients face to face. That's why I know they're legit. Yeah. Maybe you should tell me what you're looking for. Uh, I need help. Um, I need you to track someone down for me. Okay. You can do that, right? Sure. But, but listen, you have to keep this totally secret, okay? Nobody can know what we're doing here. Okay, look. Maybe you want to tell me who it is you're looking for. Look, I need someone I can trust. Can, can I trust you? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Look, there's a diner around the corner. Why don't we take a walk? You and I can just talk. I, 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 I can't be seen. Here, here, take it, take it. I gotta know more. thousand things I'd rather do than go to this event. We promised. That was just number three. Wait till you see number six and number seven. We're going, both of us. <laughs> but I guess we could be fashionably late. <laughs> Tell me about number seven again. Well, I say we take this right to their doorsteps. Camp out at City Hall until we get some answers. Councilwoman Ferrani's promised to follow through with this. We have to give her time to him, please. I want results, not empty rhetoric, especially from someone who the gay community helped put into office. You agree with me, don't you? Uh, do I? No, you don't. Nope, I don't. Definitely do not. Look at that, evaporated. It's a good drink. It's nice talking to you. Likewise, I'm sure. You know, darling, I love you more than my luggage, but sometimes I wish you'd at least pretend to be interested in what's going on in the world. I am interested in the world. I just don't give a rat's ass about politics. Maybe that's because you don't know anything about it. Maybe that's because it's boring. Boring? Honey, politics is the most exciting cornerstone of our civilization. It takes mastery of many skills. Psychology, persuasion, communication. I communicate just fine. Observe. Barkeep, two martinis, please, and just dab the vermouth behind my ears. Sometimes I swear you'd be happier spending the evening with a bullet-riddled corpse. That's not true. I also enjoy dodging speeding vehicles in dark alleys in the middle of the night. Speaking of that, have you heard from your young Mr. Hale today? No. I called him, left a message, but I haven't heard back. You guys hear that? Every time a martini shaker is shaken, an angel gets his wings. It's you, right? You're the guy that's in the advocate article. You're the gay detective. Uh, Sparky, right? Strachey. It's, it's Donald Strachey, and he's a private investigator, actually. How cool is that? You know, you're like you're like the first gay detective that I've ever heard of. I know a couple of gay firemen, but a gay detective? Yeah, uh, that's something. Saved by the ringtone. <laughs> Ooh, Strachey. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to tell me what it's about, detective? Uh-huh. Right now? Oh, okay. See you in 20 minutes. You got it. I'm a yes. Bullet riddled corpse. Detective Bailey says it's an emergency. Sorry, honey. Just 
Sparky the Gay Detective off to save the day. Always wear formal attire to crime scene, straight chief. Try to upgrade my image. Mm -hmm. See him? Thank you. All hail. Shit. You know him? What happened? He had a stroke. <clears throat> a stroke? He's barely 20 years old. Washed on a bottle of Xanax with bourbon. Suicide. So it appears. I'll know for sure after the autopsy. You seen Bailey around? You're the P.I.? You figure it out. Detective, my son was murdered. Now someone did this to him. Mrs. Hale will investigate every part. Investigate? That coroner has already made up her mind. No, she hasn't. Paul would not kill himself. He wouldn't do that. He did leave a note, Mrs. Hale. <clears throat> Detective Bailey? Did you fall off a wedding cake, Strachey? Excuse me, Mrs. Hale. I'm... Donald Strachey, I'm a private investigator, and I'm so sorry about your son. Thank you. God, my baby. Look, we make this quick. Why did the deceased have your card in his pocket? Between him and me. What, is he a client or boyfriend? And what does that mean? I met him last night. What are you implying? My son was not gay, if that's what you mean. Look, Paul had been confused for a while. But he was much better. Dr. Cornell had completely healed him. Cornell, uh, he runs a clinic? Yes, the Phoenix Foundation for a Better Life. He's a brilliant man. He had turned Paul's life around. Well, it appears Paul Hale wasn't gay. He was ex-gay. Gay reparative therapy. Maybe you ought to give it a shot, Strachey. Oh, give up on my fantasies about you? Never. So what exactly happened last night between you and Paul Hale? Not much. We talked a little bit. He hired me to find somebody. You gonna tell me who? I don't know. We didn't get that far. Someone tried to run us over. You were probably just a disgruntled ex-client of yours. If it was an ex-client of mine, I'd probably be the dead guy, don't you think? <laughs> Paul took off. That was the last time I saw him. I'm sorry, Mom. It's just too much to take. I love you, Paul. My kids today, even their suicide notes are high-tech. Come on, Bailey. Kid hires a PI and then kills himself. Maybe he didn't inspire much confidence. What about his email? Anything there? No, and all the files have been wiped clean. Evidently, he didn't want anybody going through his stuff, especially that mother of his, is my guess. You wiped a keyboard for any other prints? It's not a homicide. Hale had Xanax and a bunch of other pills right next to him, washed it down with liquor. It couldn't get much clearer than that. Let it go. No. Paul Hale gave me $5,000 retainer. I think I'm gonna make sure he gets his money's worth. You know, trying to break into my office. Break in? Do, do I look like a thief to you? No. You look kind of familiar. Do I know you? I should. You got me fired from my job. In the Pemberley Plaza Hotel. You trashed the office and you beat up my boss. Oh, yeah. It was you? You got canned for that? 
Job sucked anyway. I only beat up people who need it. What are you doing here, Kenny Kwan? Resume? I was slipping one under your door. I saw your ad in the paper for a secretary and I recognized your name. I figured you owe me. At least that. I don't pay much. My unemployment checks run out next week. I've had six secretaries in three months. They all quit after a week. With your sparkling personality? What a shocker. Oh, and I prefer office manager. Oh my gosh, somebody broke in and trashed the place. Cute. Straight G Investigations. Kenny Kwan, Associate Investigator speaking. How may I help you? Hold please, I'll see if he's in. He won't give his name, but he says if you don't take this call, you're gonna be sleeping on the sofa. <laughs> Here, take this, go find their website. It's the Phoenix Foundation for a Better Tomorrow or something. Hey, uh, hang on. Ex-gay? Oh yeah, I dated one of those guys. It was hot. Except you always burst into tears every time we had sex. Okay, go figure out what you can. Does this mean I'm hired? It means I'm thinking about it. Go, work, work, work. Hey, honey. Your secretary? He prefers office manager. How's your day? Well, it just got more interesting. The senator received an invitation today from your Dr. Cornell. And their poster boy was Paul Hale. According to their website, Dr. Trevor Cornell is a board-certified psychiatrist, and the Phoenix Foundation operates one of the most successful reparative therapy programs in New York. I wonder what his idea of successful is. Dressing badly, decorating your house with duck decoys, and breaking out into a rash every time you hear Barbara Streisand sing. Sounds good to me. Yeah? Hey, is it... Is this the place that helps? Got an appointment? I'm oh, sorry, this was a bad idea. I'm just, I'm just gonna go. Hey, hold on. Hey, were you looking for Dr. Cornell? Yeah. yeah. Why don't you come in? Let's see if he's available. My name's Gray. Kyle. You work here? No, I just help out once in a while. Glad you came, man. Come on. I'll go see if I can find him for you, okay? Yeah. I'll be right back. You gotta forget about him. He's not worth crying over. This was so unfair of him. Well, it was selfish. That's all it was. What Paul did was completely selfish. What if the police find out? They won't, Katie. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Got lost. Kyle? Hi, I'm Lynn Cornell, Trevor's, or Dr. Cornell's wife. Uh, We're really happy you've paid us a visit. Honestly, Mrs. Cornell, No, I Lynn, please. Lynn, I didn't know where else to go. Well, you're welcome here. This way.
We're having a bit of a rough day around here, but Trevor can take a few minutes if you'd like. Does Dr. Cornell always see everybody personally? Mm-hmm. He's always made a point of it. Although that will probably change once we move to our new headquarters. I heard about that. It's in Washington, D.C., right? Yes. Trevor's dedicated to helping people all over the country, not just here in New York. It's going to be a big job, but worth it if we can save even just one person like yourself. Trevor, this is Kyle... Griffin. Uh, Griffin. Trevor Cornell. Nice to meet you, Kyle. I've got some things to take care of. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Kyle. You too, uh, Lynn. Yes, hope to see you again. Please, sit down. Let's have home. Well, it's a really nice place. Well, it's a, a work in progress, but then I guess we all are, right? How'd you hear about us, Kyle? Uh, a friend of mine. Was, uh, not really a friend of mine, just a guy, actually, that I met. Uh, told me that you really helped him. Our clients are our best referrals. Remember his name? Yeah, it was um, Paul Hale. Paul. You should know, Kyle, that uh, Paul Hale died last night. What? Terrible thing. We're all still trying to deal with it here. How? Huh? Accidental overdose. Accidental? Paul was a very troubled young man. He was very confused. I, th I thought he was like your spokesperson or something. That's what he told me. Kyle, I'm more concerned with how I can help you. What exactly are you here looking for? I want my life back. We all deserve to have the life we want. What happened to yours? I was in the army. Sergeant, actually. But they kicked me out. For, you know. Being gay? What division were you in? First Brigade, 80th Division, Echo Company, out of Maryland. Yeah, I tried to, you know, fit in with a gay community and all, but I just, I don't, I don't like it. Kyle, the thing I want you to understand, to believe, whether you look at this here at Phoenix or not, is that you, you are the only person allowed to define who you are. Choosing a homosexual lifestyle works for some, but it's a choice. Very restricting and limiting choice. So you can fix me? Make me attracted to women? I wish I could. I can't promise you that, no one can. Resisting your sexual urges might be a lifetime issue. So what's the point? The point is to choose to live a life, not a lifestyle. I'm sorry, Trevor, the group's a little upset. You might want to speak with them. Tell them I'll be right there. I'm sorry, Kyle, I uh, wish we had more time. That's all right. Actually, we're, we're having a group session tomorrow. You should come, meet some of the other members of the foundation. See what we're doing to help them. Yeah, all right, be good. We'll see you tomorrow night at eight. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Cornell. Trevor. Kyle, welcome to the Phoenix Foundation. I don't understand exactly what it is you're looking for. Well, that's because I'm not exactly sure. Your son hired me to find somebody. Find somebody who? I was hoping you might be able to tell me. I'm sure I have no idea. Well, it's two of us. But I'm thinking it must have something to do with Trevor Cornell and his group. And why would you think that? Because they're furious with him. Whatever your son was doing, he's pissing off a lot of people. Those people were his friends. Okay. Do you know who might want your son dead? Well, isn't it obvious? Homosexuals. 
I mean, if someone like Paul could, could turn away from that life, could go straight, just think how inspirational that would have been. You don't like gay people very much, do you, Mrs. Hale? All I ever wanted was what was best for my son. To see him healthy and safe and happy. Now, if you really want to find out who killed him, this is where I would start. Larry Phelps. Paul kept his photo up, huh? They were best friends since they were kids. I'm sure he's the reason that Paul became confused to begin with. So you think this kid would hurt Paul? For the last year, ever since Paul turned his life around, Larry has done nothing but harass my son. He's called him a traitor, a fraud. Paul was very upset. So why didn't you just steer clear of him? Because they were at film school together at the university. He couldn't just steer clear of him. Okay. I'll talk with Mr. Phelps. You don't have to lie to me. I'm not the one paying your fee. The only reason you're even investigating this case is to try to smear Dr. Cornell's good name. That's all you really care about, isn't it? Your son asked me for my help. He also asked me if he could trust me, and I told him that he could. So if somebody murdered him, I really don't give a damn who they sleep with. I'll find him. Goodbye, Mrs. Hale. Street, she was wondering if I could talk to you a little bit. Hey! Larry! Wait a minute! That's why you attacked me. Attack? This is an asshole. All right. All right, let's start over again, all right? Strachey. Yeah? Pretty close. Why? Yeah, I'll be there in 15 minutes. Better make it half hour. Hey, look who's here. There's an Albany's most famous gay dick. Let's well, say yourself short, Stensky. The boys I talked to say you ain't so bad yourself. Get in goodwill wherever you go, huh, Stray Chief? What can I say? This place just brings out the best in me. Hello. Corner rule it a suicide. A drug overdose, just like we thought. Phenylzine. That's right. I thought he was taking Xanax. 
Yeah, well, we found Xanax right next to the body, but no trace of it in the system. It turns out it was the phenylzine that killed him. Did he have a script for phenylzine? No, didn't have a prescription for either. That's why Dr. Song didn't suspect anything. She figures whoever gave him the Xanax gave him the phenylzine as well. Plus the crime scene, the note, everything indicates suicide. So who gave him the pills? That's none of my business. I investigate homicides. The coroner's ruled this is suicide. This case is closed. You might as well take that with you. I have uh, another copy in my files. Thank you. Strachey, what's the deal with this kid? Why the interest? I don't know. I guess he reminds me of someone I used to know. A long time ago. I got Thai takeout with double chocolate fudge ice cream, hot fudge optional, and that movie with the two straight guys playing two gay guys playing two straight girls to seduce their boss or something. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to work tonight. But but it's 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 Tuesday night. We we watch movies on Tuesday night. I know, but it's the whole Paul Hale thing. Suicide? Well, maybe not. But but I thought they found the pills right next to his body. They did, but Paul didn't take any of them. So how did he die? Well, it turns out they found another antidepressant in his system. It's called phenylzine. It's a really nasty reaction when it's taken with alcohol. Like a stroke. And an otherwise healthy 21-year-old. Right, and Paul was drinking bourbon that night. So somebody could have slipped it into his drink without him knowing? Murder! Or he took it himself. I intend to find out. Doing a little undercover work tonight at the Phoenix Foundation. Hmm. Well, isn't, isn't that the sweater that my mother made you? Yep. It's group therapy. I gotta blend in with all the other recovering homosexuals. I won't tell you said that. So you think that somebody there might know something about Paul's death? Well, it's possible. They're definitely hiding something. There's something they don't want the police to know about, and I intend to find out what it is. You have to save me some Thai food and not eat all the ice cream, piggy. Good luck! And then don't let him brainwash you! I'm the only one I guess to do that. <clears throat> I was a freshman at NYU. I thought I was gonna be this huge artist, you know? My first winter was so shitty being away from home and all. So that's when I started, you know, doing things, gay things. I was, I was going to clubs, I was going to bars, and I mean, pretty soon after that, I was doing drugs too. Like, I, I just wanted to be somebody. You know, I wanted to fall in love, all that stuff. It's just like that whole scene, man. It's just so crazy. So what changed for you, Jefferson? What brought you here? A few weeks ago, I, I went to this party. And for the first time ever, I, I just felt so dirty. And, 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 and I hated myself. I, I pretty much hated everything. But I, I just couldn't break free. So I 
came back to Albany to at least get some distance. Figure shit out. Turn now, every one of you from his evil way. And then you shall dwell in the land which I gave to you and your fathers. We have one new member joining us tonight. Kyle? Uh, I'm just, uh, just checking it out. Let's see if it'll work for me. What's Kyle doing? Self-defining. Self yes, self-defining. I can't tell Kyle this is the way to go. You can't tell him. The choices we make are our own choices. But you do have the choice to change. Hmm? And it's not going to be easy. But you have to ask yourself, what's the value of something if you don't have to fight for it? Life's a challenge. It's a struggle. There's nothing wrong with working hard for something you believe in. Choosing a straight lifestyle opens up all kinds of doors, amazing opportunities. A path most homosexuals are not strong enough to take. It takes faith and commitment. You have to be extremely motivated. You have to want something better for yourself and your family so badly, you can resist the temptation, which will surely come. Now, I know we're all very upset to hear the news about Paul Hale's death. All I can say about it right now is I'm happy to talk to any of you about Paul in our individual sessions. But right now, I want to keep our group time focused on one thing. You. Your struggles. And how we can all help each other to achieve the happiness we deserve. We play basketball here on Saturdays. You should come. Here? Yeah. You know, a lot of the guys. I need help getting comfortable with a more masculine role. Basketball makes them more masculine? Sports? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it doesn't look like you got that problem, but some of these guys man, need some help, huh? It's like they've never seen a football game in their life. Yeah, and, you know, part of the program is about learning how to be friends with guys, but not sleep with them. Yeah. If you want to integrate into a straight society, I don't know what people are talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, catch up with you in a little bit, all right? Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'll see you Saturday. Cool. Hey, we didn't get a chance to meet. Hi, Katie. Uh, Kyle. Wow, you got a good grip. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be more. Uh, I'm not going to tell anybody. It's just so hard. There's so much to remember. You've been here a long time? About five months. It's been amazing. I I'm so much better now. According to who? So did you know this guy, Paul, something? Yeah. I know him really well. Is he a nice guy? The best. We were engaged. Engaged? Before everything changed. What changed? Katie, let's get you home, okay, honey? Kyle? Kyle, if you'd like, I've got time for an individual session tomorrow at two. Uh, yeah, all right, uh, cool. I look forward to it. Me too, thanks. you enjoyed tonight. We're really glad you're here. I did. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow then. Count on it. Good night. Good night.
got the intimidation thing down pat, but your trailing skills suck. I know who you are. I recognize you from that article in The Advocate last year. Who are you working for? Why, you got something to hide? You listen to me. Walter is a good man. Okay, if his father has got you sneaking around out here trying to dig Who's up... Who's Walter? That punk next to me in the meeting? He's trying. Okay, man? He is bending over backwards trying to do okay, everything okay, he can. Slow down. I don't know what you're talking about. You're not working for Walter's father? No. Why would Walter's father hire a PI? To check up on him. He's trying to find out if Walter's really gone straight. So how long you and Walter been together? Three years. <laughs> Don't you think it's a little late for Walter to try to convince his father that he's straight? Not when his father is lying on his deathbed and worth over five million dollars. I get it. So can you tell me anything about Paul Hale? I know there's something going on you guys don't want the police to know about. Honestly, I don't know exactly what was going on. Paul was always the golden boy. But over the past few weeks, though, there were... Problems? It was like Paul just had enough one day. He started asking these really, really pointed questions to Cornell and just made it real uncomfortable for him. About the foundation? Yeah, about everything. And then on Tuesday, there was this big blowout during group in front of everybody. I mean, Paul and Cornell, they really went at each other. Paul threatened to leave the program. And Cornell just said how devastated Paul's mother would be. Finally, Paul just left. I have never, ever seen Cornell so angry. It was ugly. Sounds like Paul may have been on his way to being an ex-ex-gay. LaVon! I didn't know where you went. I was just talking over here. Oh, that's okay, he wasn't working for your father. He was just checking into Paul's death. Hey, Walter, I... we need to go. It's always like this after Gurf. LaVon! I'm leaving, so if you want to come, come now. See why I got a bear around? Sorry, sorry, I know I'm late, but apparently that twink at the coffee shop doesn't know the difference between a chai latte and a chai cappuccino. I mean, you call yourself a barista and you can't even get the orders right? Kenny, I need you to do some research for me. Find a guy by the name of Walter Tidlow. Apparently his father's got a ton of money. See what you can find out about his family. Tidlow, got it. <laughs> what the hell is this? It's organic green leaf broth with bee pollen and clover. I thought with your temper you should probably lay off the caffeine for a few weeks. Ugh. So these ex-gay people, were they all like total freaks? No, they're people, they're confused people. Or that doctor, I mean, he must be totally whacked, right? Actually, it's a little disturbing how not whacked he is. I saw a picture of him. He's kind of cute. You think he's into Asian guys? Kenny, the good doctor is straight. Of course he is. And I'm next year's starting point guard for the Knicks. I'm impressed you know what a point guard is. I dated one. Sex was great, but I always had to hide in the back seat at away games. Can I talk to you? Uh, I have to get to work. The fire station, right? How do you know where I work? Uh, I was talking to Gray last night. I just wanted to ask you a couple questions about the program and everything. Do you have time for lunch? 
My dad's a fire chief. All my brothers are in the department. You're the only girl? No, I have a sister, but she's this total princess. Married this great guy, has the most beautiful baby girl. She's perfect. Sounds like a lot to live up to. We're just really different. It's like I live and work in the station house. It's a family. I just want to be normal like them. Who says you're not normal? You know what I mean. I mean, that's why you're there, right? It's so unfair. We can't live normal lives like everybody else. I bet your family was pretty excited about you and Paul getting engaged, huh? They didn't know. No one did. We weren't supposed to tell anyone. Why keep it a secret? There's this big fundraiser planned for next week to raise money. Paul and Trevor wanted to wait until then. They thought it'd really help the foundation and with all the press being there and all. Were you in love with Paul? Paul and I made the choice to love one another because we deserve to have a normal life. Katie, last night you told me that you were engaged to Paul until everything changed. What happened? Why are you asking me all these questions? I just want to know what I'm in for, you know? I gotta go to the station house. I know you're afraid of the police, but if you don't talk to me now, I think you're gonna be talking to them. Who are you? Paul came to see me right before he died. He was scared. He wanted my help. Help him do what? I was hoping you could tell me. I don't know. Katie, yesterday I overheard you talking to Walter and you were crying. You said there was something you were afraid the police were going to find out. Talk to me. Do you have something to do with Paul's death? It's my fault. It's my fault he's dead. Why is it your fault? I didn't mean I... I thought it would have helped. What did you do, Katie? Those pills he took. I gave them to him. What pills? The Xanax that night. When he got so mad at Trevor, they were mine. I thought they'd help. I didn't mean... Katie, Paul didn't take the Xanax. What? Did you give him anything else? Any other drugs? No. I just had those because sometimes I get really nervous. You mean... I didn't... No. here for my appointment? Great, come on in. Kyle, hi, it's nice to see you again. Uh, Trevor and I are running a few minutes late. Would you mind going in the lounge? Sure, no problem. Great, we'll hurry. Hey, man. You want to play? Oh, I thought it was Saturdays. <laughs> man, I play every chance I can get. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Definitely got to get you here for Saturdays, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gray, what do you do for a living? Pharmaceutical sales. Yeah. You know, it's nice to get to set my own hours. How about you, man? You're off in the middle of the day, too. Uh, insurance. You're here to see Trevor, huh? You know, it's, it's tough. It really is, but it's definitely worth it. <laughs> You've been coming here for a little while? Yeah, off and on, a couple of years. Off and on? Yeah, you know, had a relapse a couple times. How hard is this, though, you know? Good looking guys. Why bother?
because of this. Yeah. 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 Jessica left me once. Never again. And I wear it around my neck to remind myself. But isn't that just like living a lie? Huh. And every night I go home to my family and have dinner with them. And then read my kids' stories before I put them to bed. You know, that's, that's no lie. Sounds tough. Yeah, it's, it's harder than hell if you want to know the truth. The worst part is, it doesn't get any easier. I can tell. Kyle, we're ready now. I know. Good luck, man. You too. And just sign right there at the bottom. He's not gonna perform shock therapy or a lobotomy on me or anything, is he? Oh, we don't advocate that treatment any longer. We haven't for several years. But isn't all this just saying that reparative therapy doesn't really work? Oh, not at all. This is simply what they call informed consent, making it clear to you that this is an area where psychologists have many different opinions. The American Psychological Association and the American Psychiatric Association oppose all portrayals of lesbian, gay, and bisexual people as mentally ill and in need of treatment due to their sexual orientation. It's sad, isn't it? How political correctness has pervaded even into the world of medicine and mental health. But the real question, Kyle, is do you think it'll work for you? Thank you. You have a very nice looking family. You could too one day. What about your son? Where's he in college? Excellent. Well, everything looks to be in order. Let me see if Trevor's ready for you. So then, Kyle, tell me, if you hadn't pursued a gay lifestyle, who would you be today? I didn't really pursue anything. My life just evolved. You're avoiding my question. Who would you be today? I don't know. Imagine. I guess I'd probably still be in the Army. Definitely. And what do you think that would have been like? Just gotten a promotion in military intelligence. That would have been interesting. And how do you think that would have been, military intelligence? It's what I wanted. Worked really hard for it for a couple of years. That's how I always saw myself. So the Army was going to be your career? Not my career. My life. Were you a good soldier? Yeah. The best. I have no doubt. But Kyle, I want you to think of these things. The road's not taken. The roads that are closed to you, when you self-define as homosexual. When you understand those consequences, you have the strength on the road to recovery. Recovery? Recovery of everything you could have been. The restoration of a freer, more open life. From not being ghettoized by having to live in the gay area to having your politics decided for you because you're supposed to support gay issues. You give up an aspect of your own individuality the moment you identify yourself as gay. You and I, we're gonna work together on giving you back a normal life. The way nature and God intended it. God. Well, if God wanted it that way, why didn't he just make me straight to begin with? He did. But we'll talk about that in our next session. We can explore your family dynamics, better understand 
where you deviated from the path. Okay? What about you, Dr. Cornell? You everything you always wanted to be. Well, we all want more in our lives. That's to be expected. Taking the Foundation National, that's a big deal, right? Opening a lot of opportunities, television talk shows, speaking engagements, there's a lot of money in that. Why don't you ask me what you really want to know? You really believe what you're selling, or are you just trying to make a name for yourself? You want to know if I believe in what I'm doing? Unequivocally, yes. I'm here to change lives, Kyle. And I know it works, because I've seen it in action. It didn't work for Paul Hale. Paul made his own choices. I heard you two had a fight. We had a difference of opinion. He wasn't thinking clearly. He was disturbed, but he would come around. In time for next week's fundraiser? Paul was very confused, Kyle. Well, maybe he was, but he was also in every single advertisement for your foundation. He was supposed to announce his engagement at your event. You're not here for treatment at all, Will. You're a psychiatrist, Dr. Cornell. You prescribe meds. Do you know what happens when phenylene mixes with alcohol? Get out of my office now! What happened to Paul Hale, huh? He have a relapse? Get out! You look too good. Your poster boy flies a coop, would it? Paul never would have done that to me. Oh, no, I heard that that's exactly what he did. But that pissed you off, huh, Doc? You sure look pissed now. Get out and don't come back. What'd you two talk about that night? Tell him everything was gonna be okay when you poisoned him to death, watch him twist and die on the floor, and he cried for help. I loved Paul. Loved him. Trevor, what's going on? Get out. Get out now before I call the police. Oh, I'm pretty sure the police will be calling you. What are you doing? My job. Don't move, man. I got a gun aimed at the back of your head. Put your hands on the steering wheel. Gray, take it easy. Drive away. We can talk about this. Just drive. <sighs> What's this about, Gray? I heard you with Cornell. He's pretty angry, huh? Yeah. Guess I was saying things I didn't want to hear. About Paul Hale. That's exactly what it was about. What are we doing here, Gray? Look, they got in a fight, you know. Paul and Dr. Cornell. The other night. A group. Yeah, I know. Paul pushed Cornell, and it looked like... It looked like Dr. Cornell wanted to kill Paul. Do you think he did? I don't know. But the thing is, when, when Paul left, he grabbed his bag and... and some stuff spilled out of it, like paper, pens, and, and and this. I took it home and washed it. I take it from this conversation it wasn't Pizza Boy 3. I don't know who you are, but if you're here to find out who killed Paul Hale, I think this will help. Gray, I'm married. Or at least as close to it as two men could get in this country. More importantly, I'm in love with him. Like you are a nice guy. You seem smart. And Lord knows you're good looking. Okay. So. So, you're gonna get out of my car, All right? And you're gonna go home, and you're gonna love that family of yours, and somehow you're gonna figure out a way to be real.
Where's Donald? I'm not at liberty to say. May I help you? You must be the new secretary. Office manager. And you are? I'm Tim Callahan. I'm sorry, did you have an appointment? I'm Donald's partner. His boyfriend. Oh, gosh, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's nice to meet you. Pleasure. I feel like a complete jerk. I mean, I should have known your name. <laughs> I just didn't know Donald was into older. Can I get you a coffee? Kenny, we got a trek. Hey, what are you doing here? Hey. Well, the senator um, finished kissing babies a little early today, so I thought maybe I could convince Albany's cutest private eye to take me out for a latte. Well, I know him. He's a pushover. Five minutes. Grab a seat. Sure. At my age, I should probably get all the rest I can. Kenny, we gotta find everything we can on the Cornell's kid. Everything. Where he lives, what he's doing, all of it. Cornell kid. Got it. And I did that check you wanted on Walter Tidlow? Tidlow? As in Clifford Tidlow, the developer? Right. Apparently his son Walter was gonna inherit like five million bucks. Eh, not anymore. What do you mean? Well, the government seized all his assets for tax fraud. His estate tried to get Senator Glassman to intervene, but there was nothing we could do. He hasn't got a dime. Wow. I wonder if Walter knows he's wasting his time playing it straight. I wonder if LeVon knows he's wasting his time with Walter. LeVon? Walter's boy. Partner. You think that LeVon found out about the money? And maybe LeVon decided to find himself another rich boyfriend. Like Paul Hale. Right. And Walter found out about Paul and um, Levon. Levon and put the pills in Paul's drink. Oh my god, that's it. We solved it. <laughs> Good job, boys. A couple of problems with your theory. One, Levon and Walter were both in group therapy at the exact time of Paul's death. Number two, Paul wasn't just planning to leave the group, he was planning to take down the entire Phoenix Foundation with him. Oh. But the truth turned out to be something totally different. I wanted to believe. I wanted to change. And I did change. Finally. Just not in the way I was expecting. What is that? That's the reason Paul Hale was murdered. Did you call Larry Phelps yet? Yeah, and I left like six messages, but nothing. I even contacted his landlady, and she said she hadn't seen him all week. It's like he vanished. He hasn't vanished. He's hiding. Is that him? Yep. That's why he was so scared. He knew whatever Paul knew, so whoever killed Paul is after him now. Rain check? Rain check. For a buddy of mine, Larry Phelps. You know him? Uh, yeah, uh, he's not here. And nobody's seen him all week. <laughs> of course. He's got some footage that I need. Is there any chance you can show me where he's been working? Yeah. He was in here 10 or 12 hours a day. Wouldn't let anybody see what he was doing either. Well, that's strange. What? The hard drives are gone. Maybe he's finished? Yeah, but he wouldn't take the hard drives with him. All right, if you see him, have him give me a call, okay? Donald Strachey, private investigator. Hey, you're that gay detective, right? The one from the magazine. Does everybody read that thing? Listen to me, find him, okay? Tell him I'm a friend of Paul's, that's important, you got it? I'm a friend. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll sign your magazine. <laughs>
How many is that? Three. Uh, one. You haven't even touched it yet. Not in the mood. Uh oh. You want to talk about it? Just thinking. With you, that's usually not a good thing. <laughs> You ever wonder what your life would be like if you weren't gay? I hate it when you do undercover work. You're not actually listening to this uh, quack. No, it's not even about gay. I'm just. Don't you ever think about how things would be different? Not really. Come on. I mean, what if you'd never been kicked out of the seminary? You loved it there. I did. It felt like my calling. All right, then. You, you could be in Africa or who knows where. Helping sick people. A lot of things would be different. But just different, not necessarily better. Maybe they would be. I wouldn't have you. So they couldn't have been better. The gay detective. Private investigator. That's me, huh? That's what I've become. Only if that's how you see yourself. I'm cool with being gay, you know that. But it's ridiculous to say that it doesn't change things. It doesn't affect your options. The problem is not being gay, it's, it's, it's other people, ignorant people telling you who you can and can't be because you're gay. You never feel a little bit trapped? A little? I wouldn't trade my life with anyone. I like my life. And I thought you did too. Timothy, come on. I'm sorry you feel trapped. Tim! <laughs> Gracie! What? Look, I'm kind of busy right now. Can you think of wait? Where are you? Be whoever you thought I was. Yeah, sorry. Things have just been a little weird since Paul died. You don't think he killed himself either? No. Those fuckers killed him. Okay. Which fuckers exactly are we talking about? The Phoenix Foundation. Who else? Is that the film that you and Paul were working on? An expose on the Phoenix Foundation? It was Paul's movie. I was gonna let the truth out about those assholes. That's why they wiped out his hard drive then. He was storing the film on his computer. Yeah, but he gave me a backup copy, and uh, I'd be coming in here working on it every night after they close up. You know, I don't care how long it takes. Um, I'm gonna finish it for him. I don't care how many threatening messages they leave. Who's threatening you? Well, I thought it was you. That's why I ran. I thought you were going to beat me up or something. I only beat up people who need it. So who do they say they are when they call you? Lawyers, mostly. Say they're going to sue my ass if there's anything slanderous in the movie. How do they know about the movie? I don't know. Maybe maybe they found one of the cameras that Paul hid. I don't there's know. a hidden camera? Yeah, in uh, Cornell's office. Paul was filming Dr. Cornell's private sessions? The last three weeks, yeah. yeah. You're asking me to do something I'm not comfortable with. Listen to me. Dr. Cornell, all I need you to do is tell him. Just tell him I'm straight for God's sake. But you're not, are you? Are you? Walter Tidlow. Yeah, we're altering the voices to make sure all the clients stay anonymous. I can make this worth your while. I'll inherit a lot. I can make a donation.
donation to Phoenix. Father, a big donation. So no one that knew Paul was making this movie might have a reason to kill him. What the hell? Stay here. Just keep these guys back. I'm gonna need your gun. You didn't get a good look at the shooter? I know I did. This is a police matter now. It should have been a long time ago. You think this guy is Trevor Cornell? Come on, Bailey. He tells me too my face he's in love with Paul. Kids making movies gonna destroy everything he's working for. What do you think? We'll check it out. See if he's got an alibi. A lot of people lie for him. Look, if this guy's involved in the murders of Paul Hale and Larry Phelps, I promise you, I will put him behind bars. But I want you out of this. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly clear. Yeah. Wake up Judge Frears. I need a warrant. Hi. Hey. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what? Oh my God! It's nothing. Don't worry, it's Donald. It barely hit me. A couple of drinks isn't gonna fix, All right? Should I ask you about it? No. I said I have to tell you about it, and I don't want to talk about it right now. Well, then we won't talk about it. Who's that? That's Kyle Griffin. My lieutenant. The first man I ever left. You never mentioned him before? Yeah. He saved my life. We got caught in a ambush, snipers, and I got hit. Right, the scar on your back. Yeah. Kyle came running back for me. You won the Medal of Honor for that. He's a hero. You two were a couple. Yeah. It's crazy. Trying to have a relationship in the army. All the secret hiding places and these long, meaningful glances. Always afraid someone was going to find out about us.
It sounds horrible. Yeah. I don't know. I tried to run so long for being gay. And then there I was. Soldier. In love with a man. And I was happy. How long? About four months. Then we get dragged in by the CID and they separate us and start asking us questions about our relationship. I thought they weren't supposed to ask and you weren't supposed to tell. Oh, well, just because the rule exists doesn't mean the army has to follow. So what'd you do? I told the truth. And I don't even know why. It wasn't like I was all of a sudden so excited about being gay. I just... I just loved him, and... It didn't seem right to lie about that. And in that moment, everything changed. I lost everything. I lost... my career. My friends, all my dreams. And what about Kyle? Hey. Hey. He hated me. He hated me. He wouldn't talk to me. And then on the day we got discharged, he put a gun in his mouth. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, baby. Oh. <laughs> psychiatrist whose controversial conversion therapy has drawn sharp criticism within the gay and lesbian community. Now, Dr. Cornell is expected to be charged with the murder of Larry Phelps, a local university student gunned down last night. Look at Paul Hale, too. Authorities reportedly found the murder weapon inside Cornell's office and his Phoenix Foundation headquarters. Kelsey Thomas, WXRN News. They found the gun in his office? Isn't that a little convenient? Convenient? Well, you said so yourself, he was smart. So he goes and he, he kills somebody, and then he, he puts the gun in the office. Just give me some more coffee. And what made Paul Hale pick a fight with him at that group session in the first place? I mean, the guy was gonna, he was gonna blindsided him with that film he was making the following week. And what about Lynn Cornell? She had as much to lose as her husband does. Don't you have something political to do? I'm just saying, the Don Stretcher that I know wouldn't just accept the obvious. I know you'd like to believe he was guilty. Just give me a couple of minutes. We got that guy cold. The gun was found locked in his desk drawer, uh, along with several capsules of phenylzine, and he has no alibi. He says he was alone in his office at the time of the shooting. Isn't that a little convenient? And I thought you'd be ecstatic. No, so did I. Got him in the holding cell until they get here to take him over to county. Thanks. 
You did this to me. Let's see you did it to yourself. I'm being framed. Okay. Who framed you? Someone who doesn't want to see my work succeed. Probably someone like you. You're right. It was me. I'll go home now. What about your alibi? I was alone. No one saw you? No. Believe me, I could never shoot anyone. What about poison them? Hmm? A little phenylzine bourbon combo, something like that? I would never hurt Paul. You told me that you loved him. He loved you back? Of course you think that. Turn it into something deviant and unnatural. Well, what was it, Ted? I loved Paul like a son. The son I lost. Lost? My son Andrew, he died four years ago. An accident. What kind of an accident? He was drunk. He was drunk a lot. No matter how many times we tried to get him help. Sorry, I thought... Yeah, you thought what? Paul hired me to find somebody. I thought maybe he was your son. Paul knew my son was dead. We, uh, we talked about our families a lot. Okay, tell me about the night, the big blow up with Paul. What, how'd that get started? What happened? I don't know. Right, you know what, I'm trying to help you here because it's about every poor maybe that wants to let you- I don't know! It came out of nowhere! Paul had been distant for several weeks. I tried to talk to him, but- You can't think of any thing that set him off that day. I didn't even see him until he came into the group. Who else did you see that day? A lot of people. In individual sessions. Did you have the individual sessions? Yeah. Yeah, I saw Walter and Katie in the afternoon and, and, and Gray right before group. Okay. Where are you going? You gonna help me or not? Unfortunately. Leave us alone. Open the door. Haven't you done enough? I can help your husband. Go to hell. Your husband's about to go to prison for a murder that he didn't commit. So whatever you think about me, I'm the best chance he's got. Trevor is a good man. Yeah, he's a real peach. What are you doing? That was a gift. Gift for Paul? Yes, a few weeks ago. Trevor was the star of Paul's new movie. We heard he was making a film, but this is immoral. I can't believe Paul would do this. Well, he did. Whoever killed Paul knew he was doing it. They also killed Larry Phelps, wiped out all the footage. This thing's on a motion sensor, which means he was filming every single time there was movement in the office. My God. And it has a wireless transmitter, which means it was sending images to a computer that has to be close, 100 feet or so. My office. Paul was helping with the marketing materials for the national launch. been downloading every time he came in here. But the last time he was in was during the group session. All right, so there's probably a couple days worth of home movies waiting for us. And Trevor was in his office during the shooting, and this would prove to the police he was really there, right? If he was telling the truth, yeah. We're going to do a search for any large movie files. Oh, there they are. Trevor was telling the truth. You'll see.
I was telling you half the truth. He was in his office. That stupid Hale is starting to suspect something. I think he knows our big wedding announcement is nothing but bullshit. You need to tell your wife you want a divorce now. It's not that easy. You think it's been easy for me playing a dyke for the past six months just so everyone will believe your program really works? Just a little bit longer. It'll all be over soon. Well, if you don't do something, Damn. I will. Eight. Katie? Why couldn't you leave it alone? Take it easy. Shut up! Shut the fuck up. Who are you gonna blame this one on, huh, Katie? Cornell's in jail. I was practically raised in a fire department. Nobody will ever know what really happened in here after I'm done. So that's it, huh? Paul found out what's going on with you and Cornell? He believed anything I told him right till the end. Don't move. The only person I was in love with was Trevor. All of this was for Trevor. So what, you set him up for murder? I needed to show him who was in control. <laughs> Fucking great program you run here, lady. Suppose you enjoy this. Two kids died because of your lies. There's nothing here to enjoy. Straight G, you're bleeding. You must really love your job to keep coming back for more. <laughs> it's a living. You know, I still don't have any idea what the hell I was hired for. No idea who it was Paul wanted me to find. I do. I know who Paul wanted you to find. The invitation list for the Sisters of Mercy ball is not in this file. You lied to me, Mrs. Hale. Find it. Detective Bailey called. He said you've found the woman who killed my son. I did. I knew Paul wouldn't kill himself. He had too much to live for. Yeah, but you weren't exactly certain, were you? I mean, you were pretty hard on him for being gay. I loved my son more than anything in the world. I gave Paul everything. Everything except his father? His father went away a long time ago. Went away or was sent away? Isn't that what you told Dr. Cornell? That your husband was cheating on you with another man, so you kicked him out? Cut him off from ever seeing his son again? He chose that way of life. And you couldn't handle that, could you? So you told Paul that his father walked out on both of you. He didn't care about his family. You taught him to hate his father. Your son discovered the truth. How? Dr. Cornell told him. He thought it would reinforce Paul's desire to be straight, but it backfired on him. All of a sudden, Paul didn't feel like the freak he was led to believe he was. I never made him feel like he was a freak. He was my son, my child. Yeah, but you did push him into the Phoenix Foundation, didn't you? A place where every single day they reinforced an idea that you gave him that he wasn't good enough. That he'd only be happy if he was anything other than what he was, gay. I thought it was for the best. I did. 
I just never imagined. I just wanted him to be happy. I think that's what Paul wanted too. We weren't going to do that anymore. No, we agreed that you'd stop thinking. I'm allowed. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I have an answer to that question of yours. Did I ask a question? How my life would be different if I hadn't been gay? That question? Hmm. Except I've turned it around a little bit. It's how my life would be different if I hadn't met you. Well, why don't I like where this is going? First, I would know virtually nothing about gunshot wounds. Disastrous. Second, I would most likely never have been kidnapped, nor had my life threatened. And third... Okay, okay. And third... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you finished? I haven't even begun to start. Come here, <laughs>